chemistry that we all have together, I feel like that sort of lends itself to the success that we're, we're having as a team and lets us win more games and be a good team all together. And the fans love it too. Just how nice is it to be back home at Truist Park for a week in front of these fans? Uh, I love it. I love it. I feel blessed. Uh, it's, it's awesome when you call my name. Uh, I feel, feel so happy every time. Yeah, there was a lot of Eddie chants last night, too, which was nice. <laughs> appreciate the time, and we'll see you later. Oh, my gosh, I don't even know how I just ended that, but appreciate the time. That's Eddie Rosario. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care. Excellent work, Lord Jabbar. Appreciate it, as always. Let's take a look at the Braves batting order for today's contest. Frankly, as they talked about, it is any and everybody within this lineup, from Ronald Acuna Jr. all the way down to Michael Harris the second, that has given the Central Division, and frankly, both leagues, the absolute work over the course of the season. Chris. Well, I have a hard time understanding why Matt Olson's batting average has moved. He's been absolutely crushing the ball. You know, this, this division domination, 5-1 and one against Cincy. They swept them early in the year. Sweep of Kansas City. Have a chance to sweep Minnesota. I mean, I don't know what it is, but these teams might just be running into a really, really good Braves offense. I'm going to talk specifically about the AL Central because we both played in that for a little while back in the day. And I think the problem is right now, they're being found out because of the balanced schedule. They're not able to beat up on the weaker Central that is over there. We've got a couple of teams that are going through a tough time right now. Let's just say that. So, you know, they're leading the division right now with an under 500 record. That speaks to what kind of division that they're playing in, and that's what we're finding out right now when they run up against the team that is actually legitimately leading the division with a, a just a, an absolute force in the NL right now. Yeah, just just by a wide margin, right. albeit, right? It is an incredible feat that the Braves have done, uh, made all the way to this point of the season. 52 wins deep, looking to make it 53. We'll got, we have more on the pitching matchup coming up on the other side here on Braves Live. So yeah, USAA. and Kobe Aller make up your Comcast business pitching matchup for today's series finale against the Twins here at Truist Park. Haven't seen Maeda since his Dodger days. Uh, had three starts against Atlanta then, but Kobe Aller is making his 2023 debut. Chris Smedlin after a couple of rehab starts with the Gwinnett Strikers. Yes, I got a chance to speak with uh, AAA manager Matsu Yasusopo, and he said he looks he looked really good. He's, he's uh, just used the four seamers top of the zone, a lot of cutters. He'll drop a change up in there every once in a while, but you know, just one of those one of those guys that's gonna kind of come in there and then uh, attempt to throw strikes. I don't know if he's played for a team like this Atlanta Braves team. I, I think it's gonna help his confidence coming in you see the arsenal I mean for the most part he's he hasn't had a lot of success in the, in, in the big leagues with his with his time in Texas as well gave up 29 homers and 124 innings you know a lot could be said about a lot of different things 
but I feel like this guy's been around forever. He drafted when he was 17 years right. old. He's only 25 years old, so I mean, a lot more time to learn the health, the health issues, whatever. But you know, he, he got the call, and, and the way this Braves, uh, this team goes, next man up, and he, he's the guy who is leading this team today and he's got an offense that's absolutely exploded over the course of the last two three four months i'm just excited to see the changes that he's made i remember when he was up here last time as you said didn't have a lot of success but he went to texas learned some things come back from injury you can obviously revamp your mechanics like we saw with spencer strider after an injury so i'm interested to see what he's come back with i think the arsenal's changed a little bit but yeah we'll, uh Lefty versus these guys is, is what we're trying to look up for that matchup reasons. They do struggle against left-handers. Yeah, and that was the thing, right? Like, making that move, especially with the All-Star break coming soon, you know you have a couple days to play with and rather than push starters in there that you're going to end up moving along from, might as well just get a spot start here and there. On the other side, there is Kenta Maeda. I mentioned that we have not faced him since the Dodger days. Has seen a dip in the numbers, frankly. There's no way around that. But what he was was super effective and, and, and can get there. Absolutely. His time with the Dodgers was some of the best some of the best pitching you'll see a Japanese player come over and do. I mean, he was absolutely electric with them. He he, uh, he got activated in May coming off Tommy John. So that has a lot to do, I think, with some of the numbers, the inflation of the ERA and whatever. But, uh, you know, the Pete, we both know about the TJ comeback and everything. So in terms of getting your stuff back and get more comfortable, he's probably just in the process of that. But, you know, when he shows up, he's got that really good four seamer, really good split. I'm sure like everyone, it's just a feel thing that he's trying to trying to struggle with. But when he's on, that slider was as disgusting as it's ever been. I remember those L.A. days where it was just he would just spin that thing like crazy and then be able to pump 94 at the top of the zone when he needed to. So it's going to be tough sledding for our guys. But that first inning, watch out, Kenta. That's it, man. Just jump on him and take all hope out of the ballpark when it comes to the Minnesota side of things. We're going to continue getting you right for this matchup against Minnesota. Got your keys to victory coming up on the other side. Looking to bust out the rooms here at Troops. Big flies hit in game two of this three games that against Minnesota. Looking to wrap up this series in sweeping fashion. Trevor Scales, Chris Bedlin, Pete Moylan here with the three game. Fellas, might as well just go ahead and give the people what they want. Your four keys to the game. Uh, for me, it's just it, you got to finish strong. You got Spencer Strider goes seven. Uh, Bryce Elder goes six. Bullpen got a much needed rest. I mean, th this team is strong. The offense is clicking. Just finish strong and, and get you a, a series sweep. Well, as my partner so eloquently discussed in the car on the way here, Kobe likes to elevate with that four seam. He's going to need to keep that four seam in the park today. These guys hit a lot of homers. We've seen what happened with Joe Ryan's four seam yesterday, so we've got to make sure that thing is up and up and swung through. My takeaway from that was that you two carpool, and that is awesome. Yes, we do. Shouts to saving the environment. We're, we're a very eco-friendly show here on Braves Live. We got the Braves coming up to wrap.
Acuna going back. <laughs> Two homers and then that. Ozzie diving stop. Oh, my. Beautiful. Robin's going to have to make a heck of a throw. He does. The Braves continued their historic run in June with another all-around win last night. And today, turn to old friend Colby Allard as the Braves go for the series sweep next on Valley Sports. Baseball here on Valley Sports is brought to you by Truist. The Braves with an early start today just after noon going for a sweep of the Minnesota Twins. Welcome back after a quick night's rest. Brandon Gaughan and Jeff Francoeur with you. Well, the Braves continue to do their thing. 52 wins on the season, 19-4 and four in June. And yesterday, Jeff, it was a different day with the same story. Braves hitting five home runs through the first two innings and cruising to a 6-2 victory. We've seen a lot of great stuff this year. I don't remember seeing what we saw yesterday. The way those balls came off the bat. Offense again, five home runs, first two innings. And now they get a chance to sweep today. Turning the ball over to Colby Allard today. A couple different choices. Choices, they decided to go with him. A couple things. Twins do not hit left-handed good uh, pitching good. So there's an opportunity for him there. He's not pitched much. He's been injured at times. You see, this will be his first MLB start since 21. I think more than anything, with a full-rested bullpen, Snit's looking to get three, four innings out of him. Hopefully he can do that this afternoon and get a sweep. And you saw the note. Remember, he was with the Braves, debuted with the Braves, went away, and now he's back and getting the start today, going for the sweep against the Minnesota Twins. And... If the offense keeps lighting it up, it's hard, it's easy up for the pitching these days. We'll see if the Braves can go for the sweep when we come back here on Valley Sports. Colby Allard taking the mound for the Atlanta Braves as they go for the sweep of the Minnesota Twins. And for more on the decision to start this lefty today here in the matinee, let's go down and join Lauren Jabara. Thanks so much, you guys. It's a beautiful hot day for some Braves baseball. But Colby Allard, it's been a really long road back to the majors for him. He was initially drafted by the Braves back in 2015, made his first appearances in the bigs in 2018 before being traded in 2019 to the Rangers. Then he was reacquired to the Braves this past offseason and made two appearances before Frenchie said he has an oblique injury and began the season on the IL. He's had two appearances since then. One hit over four innings in his first start and five hits. Two runs in his second appearance. Now, Brian Snicker said he isn't fully stretched out. They're going to keep an eye on him as today's game progresses, but they wanted a lefty pitcher because echoing Frenchie, the Twins, 103 WRC plus against righties, 86 WRC plus against lefties. So good matchup for the Braves. And hopefully it pans out that way. Here's the lineup that we talked about has struggled against lefties this year. It's presented by your local Toyota dealers. 
29th against left-handed pitching in the Twins this year. And look, they've been switching their lineup all season long, and they've done that in all three games of this series. Rocco Baldelli going with a completely different lineup than we've seen in games one and two. Before the first pitch, Jeff, what do you have for Ford Keys? Look, just give me four. He's only thrown 45 and 62 pitches and starts, but you got your whole bullpen pretty much available uh, tonight. The big time, the back part, and get a sweep, man. You got a chance to keep rolling here, finish off this Twins team. Solano digs in to start it off, and the first pitch he fouls back from Colby Aller. So a big opportunity for Colby, the 25-year-old lefty. Lauren told you the story about Debuting with the Braves, only throwing eight innings with Atlanta in 2018 before being shipped to Texas. And then the, the bad thing for him was in spring getting that right oblique strain. So he starts the year on a 60-day IL and now making his third appearance of the year and first at the major league level. Solano, who is one for five in the series, faces an 0-2 and takes it downstairs. A ball and two strikes. And the minors this year, uh, Colby was pretty much two-pitch guy. 50% of that time got the four-seamer, and then went with a cutter about 40% of the time. So we'll see if he sprinkles in a few more curves or change-ups here at this level. One-two, great start. Went with a four-seam fastball and got Solano swinging. That yeah, kind of just ran it away from him. His big problem, honestly, Brandon has been keeping the ball in the ballpark. 145 and two thirds innings the last two years with Texas, 38 home runs. So he can limit that. Good start for him. Now he faces Byron Buxton. And the Twins, for as much as we talked about their offensive deficiencies and their struggles, the one thing they have done this year is hit home runs. So hopefully that will not plague the brave southpaw here today. When that's what you, you, you get a guy now, Allard, career in the minor. He's got a 3.41 in the minors career. Big leagues. 6.07. So it's just translating that up to this level. He's done everything you've asked him to do in AAA. Two balls and a strike to the D.H. Buxton. Uh, Braves four to one on Monday. Couple of homers from Ozuna and Acuna in that game that was the that can happen too when you start getting players and offenses that struggle and you start doing things you're not used to going out of the zone trying to hit home runs trying Dick hit do too much. Well, the twins now on the season have struck out 826 times. And to put that into context, no. No other major league team has struck out near 800 times. And he's ahead 0-2 here. Royce Lewis.
This is a guy that they're very excited about in Royce Lewis, rookie who turned 24 earlier this month. Did he go? Oh, yes, yeah. he did. Colby out. Welcome back to. He's got a deal to the toughest line in baseball here today. Yeah, and his main pitch, he's got one of the better splitters in the game when it's going well. I was told today you'll see right away in the first inning if that split is working, he usually he's on. If it's floating, he's in trouble. See how he has that unorthodox delivery as he. Gets into the windup and misses there with a slider. There's the arsenal. I mean, he, he he's not. He's trying to trick you. You see the fastballs there, just 24 percent. And that velo for a fastball up in the upper 80s. So Acuna yesterday, a homer in the first, a homer in the second. Think about the start of the year at home for Acuna. That's the thing. This team hasn't been chasing outside the zone. Swing it up. Missed by Ozzie Albies.
Acuna goes for second. He steals it. No surprise there. Ronald Acuna just continues to pile up those numbers. Man, that throw almost hit the pitcher of the umpire. Umpire. See, the umpire start to run, and then he put the brakes on. Watch this. <laughs> That's Alex Tosi out there trying to get out of the way. 36 stolen bases for Ronald Acuna. And now an 0-2 to Ozzie, and that's outside. He won for seven in the series. That lone hit was a triple yesterday, his second triple of the season. Down the left field line. Just foul. Boy, by about a foot. That would have been fun. Watch Ronald run. Watch Ozzy run. Watch Ozzy run. Ozzy loses helmet, which would have happened. Atlanta with a game today, the day off tomorrow, and then welcoming the Marlins to town. Friday. And if Atlanta wins today and on Friday, they will have 21 wins in the month of June. Matching the franchise record. And Ozzie always swings and misses for the first out. Yeah, Vasquez in some pain, but he's Back down in the crouch, ready to go. Infield will come in here. And the count evens up two and two. Braves have scored seven. Five first inning runs this year. This is just game 80 of the season. Pretty remarkable. Chance to add to it. Popped up in foul ground. And Kirilov makes that play. So Austin escaped by Gallo not being able to catch it. But Kirilov does in foul ground. Two outs. and hit that one in Cincinnati was able to tie Otani and I guess Otani took it personal and since it took it personal and since then he said three home runs and two last night yeah, 
So he's up to 28. Matt still at 25. Still leads the National League in homers and runs driven in with 60 of those. You like to have two home runs in a game. That's breakout 10 and six and a third. Means you're pretty good at baseball. Right? God. <laughs> you basically dominated the game by yourself. You know, a lot of people have talked about it. I, I never thought in modern thought in modern baseball there would be somebody like Otani that could do both. Yeah. And he did it against Val. White Sox. <laughs> She's not happy. Our wonderful stage manager. Maeda with a 2 0 pitch here to the Braves. First baseman. Right center field. The Braves have scored 76 runs in the first inning this season, and this is the 80th game of the year. And two out hits. Of Goodness. What a month. What a season. Travis Darno. Uh, he takes a strike at the knees. But Brian Sticker and the crew, I think they've done a good job, Jeff, of working Sean Murphy back into the lineup here slowly. Absolutely. Given this 12 20 game, he gets another day tomorrow. And again, when you have a guy like Travis, too, who is putting up huge numbers, you can do that. Talk about Max Free, too. It's a lot easier to bring him back slow when your team's just winning at this clip. Center field, Taylor backing up. Well, it's carrying pretty well today, but on the track, he's got it. However, the Braves jump. Offended. <laughs> I'm thinking, I got more than four, yeah. Frenchie. Go for it. And he's ahead of Farmer here, 0-2. Well, it's interesting. We talked about how he's been fastball and cutter for the most part. Still quite a few curveballs to these right-handed hitters. And to me, that handed hitters. And to me, that that's why he's getting that elevated swing on the fastballs it must be looking like it's coming out of the same spot 
contact there, but foul. There's Max Freed. Still working his way back. Figure to learn a lot more about his timetable once the All-Star break hits. The All-Star break hits. Way high and outside there on the fastball one and two. Twin to make contact, but it's not going to result in a hit. High throw. Good job by Matt Olson climbing the ladder. And there's one away. Job by Orlando, and you see, knew he had time. That one sailed a little bit on him, but still plenty of time for Matt to jump up and get it. Marcy still no throwing errors at shortstop this year. Did have a rare error yesterday. But still on track to be an all-star and well-deserved Orlando Arcia. Willie Castro swings and misses. Well, a lot of people were surprised at this start today. At this start today did not go to Michael Soroka, but... As you documented, Jeff, you got a Twins lineup that has struggled, particularly against left-handers. There's a single the other way for Castro. But I, I think also, and I'm not saying the Braves are throwing in the, the towel. Obviously, they believe in Allard. But you're in a spot now where you're 52 and 26. Four strikeouts through the first six batters. And now Christian Vasquez, the catcher, takes a pitch outside. And again, through the two starts in Gwinnett, and again, Allard was coming back from the oblique injury, but four innings on June 18th, and then on Friday, just two and two-thirds. Gave up five hits and a couple of runs. Sharp so far here. Runner breaks for second, and it's a stolen base. Castro got a base. Castro got a good jump and he has good speed. That's one that we talk about is on Allard there. No matter what Darno did, he was not throwing Castro out. Even that, you see Ozzy, he just gave up and came and got the ball. Fifteenth stolen base of the season for Castro, and he's in scoring position in a one to nothing game. And 
there's a strike to Vasquez. A touch inside three and one. You know, when Allard in 2022, when he was with the Rangers last year, he split time between the big club and triple A. And even though he had the home run issues, he did strike out a lot of guys. 132 strikeouts in 110 innings. So he has that in his arsenal. He showcased it so far here today. This grounded to Riley. And it's going to get the Braves out of the second inning. No damage done. One to nothing. Let's take a look at our Zaxby's indescribably good play. Ozuna's going to lead the inning off, and since May 1st against the fastball, slugging 7 11. Well, to give you some perspective, he hit 118 versus the fastball in April. So the adjustments he's made, he's got the fourth best slugging against fastball since May 1st. So Poppy has turned it around. He has indeed, and he's three for eight in this series with a home run. How much, Jeff, as a hitter, is it a mechanical adjustment versus just a mental? You start to get a hit here and there, and everything becomes confidence. Well, he had a good spring training, so he came into the season to me with a lot of confidence, and it just Did not go the way he wanted it to but since then I feel like he's been able to do it and if you do if you see him strike out you know think about it last night struck out his first at bat came back his second at bat got a hit struck out his third at bat came back his fourth time got a hit so those don't just carry over anymore <laughs> April, he hit 091. May, 297. June, 324. 02 pitch to him here. He does strike out on the 91 mile per hour fastball from Maeda. That was, pretty, that was his best pitch of the day. A couple of sliders off the plate and then two seamer run, running in on Marcel's hands. Maeda from Japan. He's now 35 years of age. He started his pro career over in Japan, pitched there eight seasons, five-time All-Star. That's when he got on the Major League Radars. Dodgers took the chance on him and signed him to a nice contract in 2016. And now with the Twins since 2020. You know, you look at the Twins last year, not, you know, making the 
playoffs, and a lot of people picked him to him getting Tommy John really hurt. It's one of the reasons they went out and got Pablo Lopez this offseason and tried to really make a rotation that they felt could have them compete. Yeah, they've made about as big of a turnaround in their starting pitching as anybody. Well, you know what hurt them every year? If you think back, they made the playoffs so many years in a row. What, they had that record where, what, didn't they lose like 18 straight? <laughs> the Yankees in the postseason or something, but... He never had the, the power pitching in the postseason. And it hurt them every time. And last year, without that pitching, they just crumbled. They were in the playoff mix in the first half, and then they struggled down the stretch. Here's Lopez. Eddie Rosario has a 3-1 count here. And now the count full. That went right through the shoot. Even with all those playoff trips, eight Central Division titles, one in 2019 and one in 2020, they haven't been in the World Series since 91. They're still in first place despite being a game under 500. I still think, Jeff, they're probably the best team in that division. You know, they probably are. The Indians might have the best offense. Yeah, best team to watch. I, I, the Guardians. Guardians, sorry. Not bad, yes. <laughs> We're still learning. It's 12 20. Here on Valley Sports, brought to you by Truist. At Truist Park, 1-0 Atlanta. The difference in the game, Matt Olson RBI double. Colby Allard back to work here, facing 8-9-1.
Michael A. Taylor. He likes that A in his name. It's for his father, Anthony, who served 22 years in the Army and passed away in 2017. It's a tribute to his father. Home run distance here, but this one is hooking and going fast. You know, you hear something like that, and you have no problem pronouncing him how he wants to be pronounced. Absolutely. Some people sometimes you're like, come on. <laughs> but that, uh, it's pretty awesome. Thank you. Yep. And you mentioned his time with the Nationals and winning a World Series there, and then to the Royals, and now the Twins. And Allard strikes him out. Five strikeouts. Through eight batters for Colby Outer. Every single one, for the most part, has been that high fast. Fastball that just runs a little bit. And like you said, he's throwing that curveball well off that pitch, so he's getting some chase from it. When a guy I throws a fastball that is not 97 98 when you're hitting 90 91 does it make it even more appetizing when it's high in this well yeah because you believe you can get to it when you throw 97 98 sometimes you know you can't get to it still 91 if you go on a certain pitch you can get on top of it and drive it but these guys just can't right now now Joey Gallo who has bounced all over in the lineup not only in this series but this season he's hit everywhere from top to bottom and today's batting night held off one and two the only guy for the twins as you see the lefties and the lack of success for, for this lineup 29th in average 27th in slugging and 29th in strikeout rate and the more you dig into it honestly and you, you hear why they started them today you start to see it a little bit and sometimes you hear something you're like I'm not buying that that's not why they did it but you dig in the numbers more of this lineup uh, they they have big time struggled against left handed. And the lefty Gallo goes down swinging. Wow, six strikeouts now already for Allard. He's just carving these guys up right now. Like a Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> I mean, All six swinging two. Now back to the top of the order in Solano. What? Great job, too. 40 pitches, 29 strikes. And his career high in strikeouts is nine. He's already got six through three, and only one hit against it.
Michael Harris has been having an absolutely incredible run since June 7th. He's batting 425. I asked him what changed. He said it's swinging a little bit more on time. And I also asked him what it comes down to when he chooses which headband he's going to wear for which game. He said, well, I actually put that onto my trainer to be able to choose that. So last week I wore Black Panther. And for a whole week I had hits almost every single game. Now he's wearing a Spider-Man one, guys. He went three for three Monday night, a home run last night. And he's wearing it again tonight. So why not? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? See, that's the hard-hitting info we need from downstairs. Thank you. I Thank love you. that. I got you. Guys. I love that. <laughs> hey, you know what? He can wear whatever he wants as long as he keeps doing that. Well, since June 7th, he has 31 hits. That leads all to baseball in that span. So I agree. Pops this high and deep foul down the right field line. There's the headband. I like it. I like the Spider-Man look. I also asked my trainer what I should wear before I cover the ballpark. What does he say? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> this is not going to save you. Three balls and a strike. What's the problem is I also don't have a trainer. What's, so. a, what's a trainer? <laughs> yeah, it's just a part of my imagination. Deep breath for Maeda, and now a 3-1 pitch. Another hit. Now 32 hits since June 7th, most in baseball. Just so relaxed up there, gets a split here and just goes out and gets it. This is where you love when he's batting ninth, Brandon, and he gets on like this. It's a, having an extra leadoff hitter right in front of Ronald and Ozzy. It's those types of swings that you just, just weren't seeing when he was in no, that not slot. Even that, that was strike three back. The dugout. And I told you, I, it, you know, and I think one of the last games before he started to get hot, and I, I, I truly think this was one of those games where he might have just got, got sick and tired and said, I, I give up. What do I need to do to get going? Was remember, he swung about six or seven change ups and three at bats, never made the adjustment, just kept going. And those are sometimes the ones that. You know, as a hitter, sometimes you're like, I'm going to get out of this. I can figure it out. And then finally, when something like that happens is when you go to the hitting coach and say, all right, I'm lost. What do you got for me? And has turned his season around, raised his average right around 100 points. Ronald with a walk in the first inning. Extended his on base streak to 17 games. That's the one thing I hate. They check every like that wasn't even close to picking someone off and they put the hand up. I'm with you. Come on, let's play ball. Keep, keep going. You've gotten used to these pitch clock games. Things moving. Well, it's not even that. It's a hey, close plays. I totally get yeah. every time you throw over to first. You don't have to check. I feel like sometimes if you were my eight out there, a pitcher too, you'd kind of be like, all right, let's. Yeah, let's I'm in a nice groove here. And it'll check over. Now that's two. Right, he goes over there again. He's going to have to get him. See, so say, do you see that? Yeah, again. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> even close. <laughs> Rocco Baldelli loves to challenge.
just not pick up. How about <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah. Ozzy struck you out of the first. Now infield in. So the Braves up one to nothing. He's going to get a run in. Harris will. will trot home, and Atlanta doubles the lead. It's two to nothing. Nobody on the phone this time. No, they didn't check. <laughs> Maybe they heard us. <laughs> Runner goes. Riley pokes it out to left. Castro will come to get, get it, so Ronald will have to scamper back to first, and there are two away. Great thing about this lineup, you know, someone has one game where they don't do much, like last night. Matt Olson had been hot and he pulls an over and then comes out today, gets that rips that RBI double. You just you're getting production from somebody new in the lineup every single day. Somebody new in the lineup every single day. It's a small sample size, but Matt Olson is now four for five against Maeda in his career with two doubles and two homers. So I think he likes this matchup. Ground ball here that is taken easily by Solano to end the inning, but the Braves tack on a run two to nothing. is a part of who you are but it's especially important in the case of a disaster be informed up in the zone a good curveball which he's been able to get ahead and then a couple cutters and change-ups he has mixed his pitches beautifully and right now he is on a roll 
He is the first Brave, Jeff, with at least six strikeouts in his first time through the opponent's batting order in a game this season. And here he's giving up extra bases to Byron Buxton as that one rolls down the left field line. Well, it doesn't shock me. I feel like this month we've already seen so many firsts and so many things. Why not? Yeah. But the first extra base hit against him, the only other hit was a single by Castro so far. Now Royce Lewis. Takes a strike right down the middle. See his numbers bottom right of your screen. He's having a great year. 329, 14 ribbies. He's been one of the few bright spots up and down this Twins order. Puts this in the air out to Ronald Acuna. On the edge of the track, he's got it. Buxton up 90 feet to third. First, and Ronald thought about unleashing that and then thought, you know what, I'm going to save. My arm on that one. <laughs> Buxton's running a second. <laughs> But I think that goes to show you the ball. He hit, he hit, got it off, kind of out front off the end. That one took him all the way to the warning track. When the humidity heats up like this, man, this ball starts jumping here at Truist Park. Boy, was it jumping in the first two innings last night for the Braves. Five homers for the first ten batters. Farmer, the Atlanta native. Grounder to third. Riley's going to come home as he should. And Buxton is dead to rights at the plate. Wow. Well, Rocco Baldelli is saying, hold on, we might want to look at it, but I don't think there's a case.
over, spread all over the yard. And that leads us to our Xfinity Game Changer feature, Jeff. The Braves have a chance to set a franchise record for the most homers in a month. Yeah, the next closest team. What you talk about is the Angels with 40. 14 more than anybody else this month. 14 more than any <laughs> anybody else. And you can see two from tying it from June. And again, they have the rest of this game and Friday night. I think they're going to get it done. I think so, too. Why not start right here, Trey? Travis. You combine last June with this June. Braves are 40 and 10. Is that good? Yeah, I think so. You, you, it's good. They okay. like this month. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about it. Difference was last June they struggled. Before the month this year they were good before the month of June they've just been even better in June that's when we were doing that a listers question they were asking us about other teams in the division I just said I think this team's playing so good that I don't think they care how much they win. I don't think they feel anybody can catch them. I love that. Too. Hard to argue against that. You're right? Minnesota Twins radio announcer Corey Provis was asking me before the series that so do you guys have any weaknesses and I thought about it and I said well there have been a couple of times where the bullpen has struggled a bit and there's injuries in the rotation but I thought really there's not a weakness no I mean it's when everybody's healthy for the most part like right now you know you get freed and right out you feel pretty confident with this team. 2-2 two -two here to Darno. And now the count runs full. And that's the thing. When I tell people this is the best Braves team I can remember in a long time, that, well, they won the World Series in 21. I said, I get that. But this team has the ability to be that the best team to They got, you know, healthy for the most part, like right now. You know, you get freed and right out. You feel pretty confident with this team. 2-2 two -two here to Darno. And now the count runs full. And that's the thing. When I tell people this is the best Braves team I can remember in a long time, that, well, they won the World Series in 21. I said, I get that. But this team has the ability to be that the best team. to me now they got to you know go the rest of the way but when you just talk about a whole year and dominating and stuff this has been pretty close to it obviously that Even see my hair in the back. <laughs> I was freaking out. Chopper to first. They'll get Ozuna at second. Cannot turn the double play. Eddie beats it out. Remember, I got it, put my hat on, and I went out, I think, for stretch, and I, you know, kind of rubbed the back of my head, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, there's no hair. <laughs> Were you married to Katie at the time? 
I can't remember. Okay. I, don't, I don't think so. I think it was one of the first year or two in Miami in the old stadium. I was wondering if she and the guy who does a great job down there I just had to go tell him from now on I don't need it <laughs> everything else you did keep doing it it's a little lower in the back it's one of the great perks of the big leagues the old haircut at the field Yeah, every time I go down to watch batting practice, there's always a, a guy in there getting lined up. Arce skies this on a sunny Wednesday afternoon. Solano will take it for the third and final out of the fourth. We march on to the Pool right now. Not too bad. Man, huh? I love it. The good news is you got someone laying down, relaxing, and kids doing cannonballs <laughs> in there too. I love that. Parent, you always have to have your head on the swivel. Yep. And strike Alex Kirilov to start the fifth. There's no doubt on a hot day like this, they got it figured out there. It's a day to be out there, that's for sure mentioned temperatures are going to get up to the low 90s today with some pretty good humidity yep fan yourself with whatever you can get even a cup holder So Colby Allard called up today. He struck out six, has not allowed any runs so far. One of your four keys was give me four. Well, he's into the fifth here. Does give up a single to Kirilov. Yeah, he didn't care much for give me four, I guess. <laughs> Look at the pitch count, Jeff, only at 54. 
Well, that's the thing. You, I would think Snit here. Hey, that, that's the whole oblique thing. Like I said, he's thrown what 45 and 62. So I don't know how. What do you think? 75. If you're going on that kind, of, so maybe five, five and a third. Vasquez fouls it back. I know this. If Snit asks him how he feels, he's going to say fine. Yeah. He's going to keep pitching. <laughs> pitching like this. But certainly something to monitor coming off that 60-day. IL stint was a grade two right oblique strain that he had before the season started. He got this guy Vasquez to ground out to Riley back in the second. Good stop by Travis Darno, 2-1. Allard was drafted by the Braves as the 14th. You're awesome. 14th overall pick back in 2015. His first start since the end of the 21 season with Texas. 2-1 pitch. And he gets the call at the top of the zone from Tom Hanahan. 2-2. Two and two. I think Vasquez liked that very much, being a catcher. You can see him shaking his head. Yeah. Mentioned his World Series title with Houston. He caught that. No hitter in game four, the combined no hitter last year. Yep. So he's a part of World Series history. The only other no hitter in World Series history, of course, was the perfect game back in 56 by Don Larson. A walk, so two base runners here to start the fifth. And you're starting to see some action down in that pen. Kirby's getting up. Seven for one sixteen with two strikes. You better not reverse jinx that. Now, make a quality pitch here, and you got him. Fastball outside. Over his nine year career, his average is below 200. Average is below 200. But he's known for the occasional homer, the pop at his back. There's that pop, but he's ahead of it foul. Kirilov led it off with the single that Vasquez walked there at first and second. Count even. This guy Gallo, long time with the Rangers, made a couple of all-star teams there in 2015. 
2019 and 2021 and also won a couple of gold gloves. Again, he's well ahead of it. Well, the two that he's throwing him there have just kind of hung. If he can finish that pitch, start it about middle and have a dive, he'll get a swing and miss. Same thing. Yeah, hung back up, which might tell you start to get a little tired at, at this point because of those three pitches I, I don't mind maybe that heater run it up two two there you go ran the heater up yep. struck him out Brian Snicker is going to go ahead and come out here and take the ball from Colby Allard. Second most strikeouts in his career. Eight of them through four and two thirds. Pretty good effort. is brought to you by the Xfinity 10G Network. The future starts now. By Georgia Natural Gas. Live the greener life. And by Synovus. Number one in consumer banking satisfaction southeast. Well, it was a 36th Major League start for Albert, but his first since 2021. Coming off a bad injury, and Jeff, he struck out eight of the 18 men he faced. You know, and I'll tell you this right now, I know people at home watching, man, he gets one more out and he qualifies for the win. Well, he started getting a little tired there at the end. And again, that's 71 pitches. It's only his third start back from, you know, being hurt. He did everything you asked him to do. And, and, and it might not go in the scorebook, but the Braves won this ball game. The guys in that clubhouse know who went out there and pitched. Beautiful job by Colby today. Now Kirby Yates will try to strand those runners at first and second. Back to the top of the order in Donovan Solano. Backhanded stop by Travis Darno. And he got set up now. If he can get this out right here, see who Snip decides to go with the six. And then you got Anderson, Mentor, and Iglesias for seven, eight, nine. With an evening off and then all of tomorrow off for the yep. Braves to rest. A ball. And a strike here to the leadoff hitter who is 0 for 2 today. And you saw the numbers on the bottom. One thing Kirby has done a great job. No walks and 15 Ks in his last nine and two thirds.
You know, it's interesting, Brandon, as you go back to remember when you were in Miami that time, you start and kind of do it, and you wondered if the Braves were going to make a move with Kirby. Remember, he had really struggled. They needed another arm in the bullpen. And about since that day, same as Marcel, he's kind of just taken off. And he got his first save in Monday in this series in three seasons. Yep. Now, he hadn't really had any save opportunities in that span either, but it had been a while. And now he's got a chance here to keep this a two to nothing game. Two down, two on, and a two ball, two strike count. Up and in. Certainly would like to avoid loading the bases and facing Byron Buxton. Kirby has what he wants. Here we go. Struck him out. Fastball. And it's still two to nothing. We're halfway home. Here you go. Brought to you by Georgia Aquarium. A lot of numbers to like for Michael Harris in June. For nine hole hitters, he has four extra base hits. Four more than anybody else in baseball, Jeff. He's got 29 extra base hits from that ninth spot this season. He's raised his average 97 points in the last 19 games coming today. So now probably, what, close to 100. Unbelievable. Yep, with that, that single and the run scored back in the third inning. Kenta Maeda back to work for Minnesota. <laughs> Another hit. Yep. Well, on Monday, he had his fifth three-hit game of the season, and he's on track for his sixth. Today, when things are going right for you, you see his load, his timing, everything is just perfect. It all clicks together, and it's a beautiful thing. Back to the top, and Ronald Acuna Jr. Harris goes to second. Did he stay on the base? Yes. I think barely. <laughs> barely. He's safe. Good jump. <laughs> that left hand hanging on for dear life. So a runner in scoring position. Speaking of runners in scoring position, when the Minnesota Twins have gotten runners on, the brace pitchers have just clamped down. Jeff, the Twins are 0 for 22 this series with runners in scoring position. They just struck out all three times they had first and second. I mean, that's a staggering statistic. Uh, I mean, for the Twins, look, they leave here, it doesn't get much, much easier. Got to go to Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. Never thought you'd say that <laughs> in a while. Well, that, that's, that's a franchise true. since last year that's really turned it around. 100%. It around. Yeah. We saw them here at Truist Park. They got a good team. Acuna cutting through the splitter there, two and two. Mm -hmm. 
Maeda, his fifth ever appearance against the Braves. Previous four with the Dodgers. 2-2. Two -two. And the count full. For Maeda, not only was it the Tommy John issue last year, but he went on the IL in April of this year with a tricep injury. And missed over a month. This is his second start back. Cunha laces it foul. But the encouraging thing for Minnesota is that his first start back from that injury last week at Detroit was good. Five innings, no runs, three hits. Not having the same success here today against Atlanta. And he walks Acuna, so there's. And he walks Acuna, so there's two on with nobody out. They're starting to stir just a little bit in that Twins bullpen. You're awesome! Cunha in the zone. This is a team that can hit whatever pitch you throw at him, but you, you saw last night a guy like Joe Ryan who's had a lot of success this year with a fastball, but the Braves were not fooled by it. No, and you heard him after the game. That's by far the most I've ever got my fastball hit. And he shied away from it after that. Yeah, he started throwing the sweeper a lot more. Yep. But it was too little too late as the Braves cruised to a 6-2 win. And now they go for the sweep here today. Chicken dance right now. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of kids here at the park today. I feel like I haven't heard that since elementary school. That's a good throwback. Come on, you do some minor league baseball, man. That's Chicken true. Dances. That's true. I feel like every other game you had it there. A lot of kids in the park. The old 10.05 special in Huntsville, Alabama, where you weren't even awake yet. Austin out. To center gives it a pretty good ride, but Tanner on the run has it just in front of the wall. Braves can't tack on, still two to nothing.
their bullpen right now with Kirby Yates out there. Let's see who's been hot brought to you by Texas Pete and it is that bullpen home games here since June 9th just a 1 2 0 ERA. Yeah 41 strikeouts and the 30 innings that they've done and of course the Braves are 8 and 1 in those games with a 2 5 6 ERA. Buxton lines this foul 2 3 4 here to schedule to face Kirby Yates in the Twins order. The hitting, the pitching, everything has been there. Braves winning 12 of their last 13, 19 of their last 22. And there's A.J. Minter getting ready. So I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Jeff Brian Snickers thinking okay Kirby get me through the six and maybe do the mentor Anderson Iglesias special yeah and you know with where you know, with where they're going to be at in the lineup possibly if you can set them down here it gives you a chance go. to We have the matchup with a couple of those lefties for the twins. We've always said it. Mentor Anderson seven eight, depending you know what the matchup calls for. Buxton one for seven in the series. His hit came back in the fourth a double. He's got a 2 2 count here. with the twins his entire career he was the twins his entire career he was the number two overall pick back in 2012 his teammate Carlos Correa was the, the number one pick in that 2012 draft Correa getting the day off today The 2-2 two -two from number 2-2. Two -two. Is hit pretty well out to left center. Not well enough, though. Hangs up for Eddie Rosario. Here's a quick message now from Zaxby's. Zaxby's Southwest Salad is more than just a salad. It's a flavor fiesta. You going to get one of those? on your way to the beach you know probably chicken fingers I'm, okay. I'm gonna get the salad it looked pretty good though but it'll have chicken for sure yeah that's a that's a safe bet some crinkle fries <laughs> Royce Lewis is 0 for 2 Ooh, ice cream. That's what you need on a day like today. You just got to eat it quick. Look at that popcorn. Popcorn. Let's Is it go. Four bags of popcorn. It seemed a little aggressive.
Or that. That'll do. Got to drink that quick for melt. So yeah, everything's going quickly today. As a kid, I used to always collect many helmets that the ice cream came in at all the ballparks. Oh yeah. That's the smart thing right there. That kid's got to figure it out. <laughs> Double. So Allard struck out eight. Yates is fan two out of the pen. Ten strikeouts today for Braves pitching, and we're only in the sixth. We talked about this was a high strikeout team coming in and the Braves have made quality pitches and, and that other stat that you dropped over 22 with runners in scoring position. It's going to call for a long series offensively. Why they've only been able to play three runs one on Monday and two yesterday. We left Cincinnati questioning. Okay. Are the Reds going to be able to get their pitching together? I think when the Twins leave here, the question is, are they going to be able to get their hitting together? And I saw last night Cincinnati beat Baltimore 3-1. Mm -hmm. So maybe their bats were just both hot and they were just going off in Cincinnati. Yeah, this series much different from the one at Great American Ballpark. Two and two now. He gets the fastball by Kyle Farmer. Kyle Farmer, who was a baseball and football star at Marist, just 10 miles from where we sit right now at Truist Park. Went on to play. Shortstop at Georgia for the Dogs, and then the Dodgers took him in the eighth round in 2013. The Eights try to send us to the bottom of the sixth, and he does just that. Once again, it's a splitter for a swing and a miss. It's bow time.
to come in and play good ball. Matt Olson swinging and missing two and two. Right now, the Fish are six and a half games back of Atlanta. But right there in the wild card race. Three and two to the Braves cleanup hitter Matt Olson, who has seven homers in his last 11 games, including career homer number 200 on Saturday in Cincinnati. in front. Moran took something off there with a changeup. And now here's a word from Delta. Braves country. Fast free Wi-Fi is rolling out. Enjoy with a free Sky Miles membership. Delta, official airline of the Atlanta Braves. Travis Darno for two. Speaking of getting guys to the All-Star game, Travis made his first All-Star appearance last year in 2022. Hey. Takes a strike there, one and one. Yes, yeah, this keeps going. The Braves keep putting up numbers. You got a feeling that charter to Seattle could be a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After that Marlins series, Braves go on the road to Cleveland, to Tampa, and then some of the guys will go to Seattle for the All-Star game. Everybody else getting a few days off. Hot shot into the dugout. Two and two. And really hope that Bryce Elder is a part of that All-Star roster. He deserves it. Say again, I, I don't know how the ERA leader in the league could not make the All Star team. Three and two. And even last night, when he had one of his starts this year that wasn't very good, he still gave you six and only gave up two runs. Exactly. Payoff pitch from Moran. And we'll do it again. Good eye. Travis Darno earns the free pass with one away. And Marcelo Zuna, who with a single last time up, extended his hit streak to nine games. Travis taking the walk there. I'm looking over these strikeout numbers.
that you were talking about earlier how good the Braves have been in the month of June not striking out it's gotten better every month this year Jeff back in April the Braves were striking out over nine times per game and then in May eight times per game and in June look at it here it is seven point one look at that progression yeah you like seeing that and again it just kind of feeds off each other too as an offense you start taking pride and putting the ball in play, making other teams make a play. Look, it's the big leagues. There's great pitch. You're going to strike out, but if you can limit it, you force the other team to make plays. Putting the ball in play here. Backhanded by Solano, and he'll throw across to get the second out. Darno in scoring position. Care what level you play at. If you put the ball in play, you give yourself a fight chance. But when they were asking Brian Snicker the other day about all the home runs, he said, "Look, they've been great, and that's wonderful." But he he said, "Look at our strikeout numbers. We are striking out less in June, and that's the thing that I'm most pleased about." Because the team was playing good in May. But now playing even better and a lot of that because they've been able to put the bat on the ball even more. Well think about the one stat we gave you the two out runs 60 for the Braves. This month 33. Back in May. Oh, one here to Eddie Rosario. And another number that two strike RBI. I mean, 152 of them across the entire season. That's second most in baseball. I mean, this lineup virtually every. Every stat you give, it's one or two across the league. Two strikes to the Braves left fielder. Darno out at second in a two to nothing game here. Fastball is low. Eddie, another guy who's been lighting it up in June, around 340 for an average. He strikes out there on the fastball to end the box. plays for the Atlanta Braves. Ozzy Albies with a diving save, tossing it to Arcia, getting a massive out at first base. And you just saw the dugout absolutely erupt. And the team had four errors yesterday, but Snit even said post game that was one of the best defensive games that we played as a team all season long. He said one of those plays plays by Ozzy and Arcia. That's definitely going to go on the highlight reel, and it's going to be really fun to watch the rest of the year and Austin Riley also echoed that sentiment as well he goes honestly it took me by surprise he said I think they talked about it before the game or something like that I don't know you never know with those guys but it was fun to watch and definitely a play we're going to be revisiting all year long guys but it was fun for us too and it was also really cool to see the celebration in the dugout everyone erupting even more than the home runs that they had yesterday pretty cool yeah Lauren it was great too I heard Snit after the game you know, just reiterate that. Said we made four errors, but it might have been one of the better defensive games we played all year. And that's what's so amazing. They made four errors and they won six to two. I don't think anybody's going to remember the four errors. I remember. I only count. 
Kind of three. Yeah. I didn't count Rosario's in left field. Yeah, there was a throw home from Eddie Rosario with a runner tagging at third. That was a good throw. It just hit the runner, and so they gave him an error. Yeah, I've had a few of those, so I don't count them. <laughs> well, AJ Minter is in here, so this is lining up about Brian Snitker at home. Allard went four and two thirds. Yates good through an inning in the third, and now Minter. The 40th appearance of the season for Minter. That leads Major League Baseball. Soft liner. Ozzy can't get it. So a leadoff single for Castro. He's two for three. I think it caught Ozzy a little bit. I thought. I think he thought it was going to be just kind of sink to him, and it had a little bit more carry than he thought. Watch him here. See how he kind of hesitates for a minute before he goes back. And I will say this sometimes it's tough during these day games seeing the balls come off the bat with the sun and everything. It can be difficult. Often we talk about the shadows here late afternoon, early evening. Well, with a 12 20 start, there are no shadows. Everybody is sun soaked today. And unless you are in the upper deck, no matter if you're in the really expensive seats or the medium expensive seats, you're out there in the thick of it. A ball and a strike here to Kirilov. Yeah, this is a day where it pays to be in the upper decks. Where you can escape the out there in the chop game. house. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's Lefty, lefty matchup. Get yourself a Frenchie's blue and just relax. Still haven't had one of those. I don't know that how we drink it. I think Coors Light comes out of his faucet at home. Addition to our right. Al Galeva found back 2 2. That one came up to Cracker Jack territory up by us. Kirilov, last couple of seasons disrupted by a pair of right wrist injuries, but knock on wood, he's been healthy this year for them. In that crazy COVID season 2020, he made his debut as a starter in the postseason that year. He was the first major league player ever to do that. It's a little unusual. Yeah, he played right field against the Astros in game two of the AL wild card that season. Swinging bunt here. And Darno looks at second, but he'll take the for sure out. Strider helping Marcel stay cool in the dugout out there. And no offense to Marcel, but your DH, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> come on, Spencer. <laughs> Let's go rub down a guy that maybe has been standing in the outfield or infield. But Poppy's the big bear. Got, Poppy it, needs it. You know, for the big bear on a hot <laughs> summer afternoon, it's tough. <laughs> Catcher Vasquez. He grounded out back in the second. He reached on a walk in the fifth. Braves with a two to nothing lead. Runs in the first and the third for Atlanta today. And Minter blows a fastball by him.
One and two. Fastball again. He got him set up, but he's late both times. See if he tries that again. And here comes the one two low and away they stay tuned for the stretch presented by Georgia natural gas coming up in between the top and the bottom of the seventh. Braves pitchers have struck out 11 AJ Minter trying to bump that up to a dozen here. Runner goes for third. Line drive to center. This could work out okay. Get the throw in there, Michael. Yep. Double him up. And it's stretched to time at Truist Park just like that. Two to nothing, Bray. What's going to go on, but dude, he first inning punches out the side, head high fastballs. They were all over the Great rates. And when it comes to helping the environment, GNG's Greener Life program makes it as easy as paying your gas bill. Sign up with a home team today. Center field, a double play to end the top of the seventh. Minnesota now 0 for 23 with runners in scoring position. In
not going to get a hit here. Gallo is over. Two outs in the bottom of the seventh. Let's take a look at our Sonovas get there feature. Ronald Acuna. This is an interleague play which spans 29 games. 30 runs, 11 homers, 11 stolen bases. Now he's reached basically in 27 of the 29 games. And 11 home runs and 19 extra base hits in an interleague oh, game. They're the most yeah. in MLB. Kind of interesting. So the Braves have played 29 games against the American League, 51 against the National League, but 11 of his 19 homers have come against the other side. And he has not been retired today. He's walked twice in a single. Swinging at the 2-0. And swinging at the 2-1. Same pitch, same result. Back-to-back -back change ups. Ronald called too many timeouts. Trying to regroup for a second. Two two now. I got him. He went to that change up again. It's a one two three bottom of the seven. the best seats, priority parking, discounts, and access to some of the best Braves events. Like this one earlier with the men, the myths, the legends, Brandon and Jeff. A list members were treated to brunch with Valley in the Chop House and a lively Q&A with BG and Frenchie. So join the A-list waitlist today at Braves.com slash waitlist. Did you guys have fun? Did they ask good questions? I think the membership numbers just went down after that. Yeah. <laughs> they had 15 people say they were out. No, it was, it was so a next blast. on the waiting list. <laughs> it, it was a blast. So make sure to shine up then. Braves.com yeah. slash waitlist. Yeah. You'll get in sooner. Now. You, might, you might move up. We got a pinch hitter in Kepler here and a new pitcher for the Braves in Joe Jimenez. So Kepler takes the spot of Michael A. Taylor, eighth in the order. 
28th appearance of the season for Joe. See, since May 27th, really last month for him, he's started to kind of turn it on some. Just like Yates over that span. What I've noticed for him is he's starting to get that fastball back. It's starting to zip out of his hand a little more where it felt early in the year for Menez it was kind of just flat. Well, it's only the second time this year that he's come in in a really crucial late game situation. Only one other time he's come in in the eighth inning in a game that was either zero one or two runs. Two two is fouled out of play. Kepler started on Monday went 0 for 3 and he started yesterday and went 0 for 4. And another foul ball out of play. So is tracking towards the seats and it will get there. Braves had an RBI double from Olsen back in the first. And then an RBI on the sack fly from Albies in the third. That's all the offense today. This one is definitely in play and it's going to hang up long enough. Whoa for Harris to come over and take it from Acuna. Was that another Acuna joke or was that real? I don't know. That's one of those where, you know, Harris right here, I'm sure, is calling for it. I think that was real. You never know with Ronald. But Ronald was screaming, I got it, I got it too. Yeah, and Harris was like, but I'm the center field. I'm the so, captain. So get out of the way. <laughs> Gallo, who is 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts swinging, has a 1 1 count here. And a pinch hitter has moved into the on deck circle. And Edward Julian. Yeah. 1 and 2. Just a touch low. Jimenez wanted it. Swing and a miss. Jimenez got him. Joey Gallo now in his last 20. Four games has struck out 42 times. And I mean, you know, really this whole game, besides that one sequence, it's just fastballs that kind of just beat him to the spot. It's almost like we talked about all three of his hits were on first pitch. If he doesn't get it first pitch and he starts getting into a count, you see pitchers take advantage. And Jimenez did just that. As I mentioned, Julian now will come in here as the pinch hitter, replacing Solano at the top of the order. With the limited success that they've had in this series, the Twins offensively, 
thought even though there was a lefty starting on the mound that Julian would still get the start because he's actually hit the Braves pretty well over the last couple of days with a few hits but coming off the bench here well that's oh. me sometimes where the whole idea of you know Gonna mix and match and numbers. The lineups are just so different every day. I, I will argue with any person that that can affect a player. You know, people try to say it doesn't. Oh, well, they got to play whether they're hitting second or, you know, seventh. I, I disagree with that. And if you don't know you're playing, you get three hits one day, you don't come back the next day. Sometimes, like, I don't care who's pitching, I'm hot right now. Jimenez ahead of him, 1-2. Sends this out to Eddie. Eddie's got it. 1-2-3 inning. Bullpen continues its strong performance. Ford dealer. And by Truist, when you start with care, you get a different kind of bank. Braves up two to nothing as we move on to the bottom of the eighth inning. They get more team coverage, full game replays, highlights, everything you need. It's Braves baseball streaming on the Bounty Sports app, and it's presented by T-Mobile. New pitcher, several changes, but we'll start with a pitcher. Jordan Balazovic is on for the Minnesota Twins. How much experience? The only five innings this year for the Twins. And with those guys that pinch hit, they now have a new outfield with Gallo out in left, Castro in center. And Kepler out in right field. And then Julian stays in the game at second base. No balls and two strikes here to Ozzy, who drove in a run on a sack fly back in the third inning. Line drive, but Julian comes into the game defensively, and the ball finds him right away. Here's a quick message from Truist. You were my mother and father's banker. You became my banker, and now you're her banker. So unbelievable because I'm just 20 years old. <laughs> Austin Riley 0 for 3 today. Has a couple of hits and a homer in the series. But you said it, Jeff. Limited experience for Balazovic. He's a rookie, just debuted back on the 18th. So this is just his second week at the big league level. And all three of his appearances were versus the Detroit Tigers. That's where Minnesota was before, and as we said, they go to Baltimore to finish their nine-game road swing. I'm going to say, look, besides, you know, Joe Ryan, I'm going to say, look, besides, you know, Joe Ryan got hit early yesterday, but you can see why people love Minnesota's arms. You know, they're pretty good. They got some lively arms, but you can tell, too, where that offense is a concern for them going in the second half. So we said Cleveland, if they get going a little bit with their deeper lineup. present some problems they're going to have to strike out less and find a way to put the ball in play more you would think just a 232 team batting average 25th in baseball 
3 2 pitch fastball. Balazovic has that and he fires it at 95 miles an hour to get Riley two away. Olsen's RBI single back in the first inning gave the Braves 76 first inning runs this year. Atlanta is on pace to break the National League record for first inning runs that was set by the 2000 St. Louis Cardinals when they had 147 of them. And then the other run in the third and it's been zeros ever since. Couple of rolling clouds overhead right now, giving everybody a little break from the sunshine on a hot day. Or when you get done with the game, guy like Darno after catching this seat, go get in that cold tub. Mm. But how cold is it? It's about 50. <laughs> Olsen out to right center field. This one may go. It does go. Matt Olsen. Another homer. 26 on the season. a little more breathing room and for him two behind Otani now tell him right back at him yeah he's just playing with him as, as Otani as you said got a couple last night now Olsen trying to play catch up again most homers in the National League and second in baseball behind Shohei and it gives the Braves another run of before we go to the ninth inning. And it now gives Matt eight homers in his last 12 games. He hits those home runs sometimes, Jeff, so high that you just, like, does that have enough? Yeah, and, then, exactly. and then he hits it almost over the bullpen. Darno buries that into the ground to short. Almost beat it out, but he did. Insurance for the Braves from Matt Olson, and now they try for the sweep. Let's go places by the Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. And by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. 
Well, the Braves bullpen, Yates, Minter, Jimenez, been really good. After Allard was good to start it for four and two thirds. Coming up, our next broadcast. What is it, Jeffrey? Let's go. It's the Friday Night Showdown. Presented by Kaiser Permanente. Oh, you I, did. Can't, I can't give you everything till Friday. Okay, you got to wait. I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's Wednesday. <laughs> okay. I mean, what do you want me to do? I can't I'm, get everybody fired I'm sorry. up. sorry. Yeah. let you get the steam and the sun out of the way. Uh, Friday, that one at 6.30 Eastern is when we will go on the air. And that will be the start of a three-game set against the Fish. That's when you'll get my okay. A effort for it. Well, hopefully Iglesias brings his A effort today. Looking for his 13th save of the season and he is quick ahead of Buxton 0 and 2 to pitch right cell got him on three and down goes Buxton one away in the ninth good change up got him on the pitch before and I love that don't change it Braves pitching 13 strikeouts now up and in to Royce Lewis. Braves win four to one on Monday, six to two on Tuesday. And now going for a shutout here on Wednesday to polish off a potential sweep. The Twins, no runs on four hits. Three and one now to Royce Lewis, who is 0 for 3. Rysel did get touched up a little bit in Cincinnati. Trying to bounce back here. And get the save. Good pitch there. Three and two. Iglesias ready. Payoff pitch. Struck him out. Braves pitchers 14 K's in this ball game. I mean, just putting on a display. Pitch after pitch of pouring strikes. What I love when you're facing a team that's been struggling offensively, no walks, don't give them any free passes, go right after them, and that's what we've seen today. Kyle Farmer is the final hope for Minnesota. Line drive. He's got it. Braves win. The Braves can seemingly do no wrong. They have 20 wins in the month of June. They sweep the Twins. The final today, three to nothing.
<laughs> and get right after it. That's against the Marlins on Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday we'll have all three. What I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. Thank <laughs> you.